Okay, guys, please take out your trig identities notes. Now, today's example, it's going to be hard. I'm not even going to lie. But the good thing is, is that this problem is the last problem for this particular set of notes. And then next week, we can do some more trigonometry. But before any of that, before we do math, a couple of quick reminders. A couple of quick reminders, guys. Number one, after today's exit ticket, please turn in the three exit tickets from this week by taking one picture and sending that to me. What else? Yes, no team quiz this Friday. You see, the reason that I've canceled the last two team quizzes is because we still have a test to play with. So that team test will have the concepts that I was gonna give you on the team quizzes. What else? Yes, tomorrow's Zoom call is at 2 p.m. Please log in at some point between 2 and 2.05 p.m. If you try to log in after, I might forget to let you in. What will the Zoom be about? I have a couple of things in mind. For sure, we're gonna do a Kahoot. Now, this Kahoot is not about math. This Kahoot is about basic trivia. Now, what's the prize for this Kahoot? The prize will be a brand spanking new $20 bill. You have the option of getting cash money on the first day of school, or I can send you a Venmo. You decide. Whoever wins, they decide how to receive the money, whichever they prefer. And if they don't want the money, I'll give it to second place. If they don't want it, third place. If they don't want it, I'll keep it. Last time, we had issues with 100 people because my package was basic. I had the basic Zoom package. Since then, I've purchased the Pro package, which allows up to a thousand people to jump in into the same chat, so we won't have that issue. So that being said, let's do some math. I went kind of fast there, so let me back off and give you time to copy this down while I ramble on a little bit. Let's see, next week, we're still focusing on trigonometry. We'll probably do something like graphing the, the sine wave or the cosine wave. Maybe we'll do solving equations, we'll see. But the point is, we still have trigonometry to look at for the next couple of weeks. But let's finish this problem to finish this particular set of notes. Now looking inside of the parentheses, I see that I have inverse inverse. So I have two different setups going on simultaneously. So I have tangent inverse tangent inverse of square root 3 fourths. We know that the inverse of a trig function equals some angle theta. In like fashion, for this part here, cosine inverse of 2 fifths, well again, the inverse of a trig function is some angle theta. However, I don't know if these thetas are the same angle. They're probably not. They're probably two completely different people. So call this theta one, theta two. Back on this side, we know how this works. This is kind of like the math that we did yesterday over by the pool. I can take the tangent of both sides. If I go tan here, it knocks this out, and it's just this fraction. But on this side, it would be tangent theta one. Yes? Similarly, cosine cosine. This knocks out, it's just two fifths equals cosine of theta 2. Maybe now we can reverse the order on both equations. So that tangent of theta 1 equals this, while the cosine of theta 2 equals that. What good do these equations do for us? Well, they give us the opportunity to make pictures and make some right triangles. How come quadrant 1, Lee? Well, because they didn't tell you which quadrant to go to, did they? And if they don't, go to quadrant one always. So we have theta here, and we have theta, but of course this is theta one and theta two. Looking at theta one, tangent is so katoa, so katoa, so katoa. Tangent is oa, opposite over adjacent. So this is opposite over adjacent. So from here, the opposite is that, and the adjacent is that, over here, Cosine, cosine, so kah toa. Cosine is kah, adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is adjacent over hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is five, but the adjacent is two. Let's go Pythagorean, Pythagorean. A squared, B squared, C squared. So we have A squared plus 
b squared equals c squared. 16 plus 3 is 19. Square rooted stays that number. So we have square root 19. a squared, b squared, c squared. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 25 take away 4 is 21. But when you square root it, it's the square root of Twenty-one. So we have like that there. So the triangles are complete. There it is. The triangles are finished. Now we can proceed on to the goal. Right there. That's the goal. So what does this equal? Sine. So we have sine. Parentheses. But instead of all of this gibberish just being copied and pasted, we can do something else. Watch. This first piece. What does this first piece equal? That first piece equals theta 1. Addition stays addition. What replaces this piece? Theta 2. So now I'm currently right here. But what in the world do I do with this? Because here are some of the things that I've seen. I have seen sine of theta. We have seen sine of 2 theta. But I have never seen sine of something plus something. So for that, Let's go to our trig identities cheat sheet, and we look specifically in this region here. So we're looking at this formula right here, which says sine of a plus b equals sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. So according to that identity, here is what this becomes. So this equals sine of theta 1 times cosine theta 2 plus cosine theta 1 times sine of theta 2. Because it's kind of like this was playing the role of A and this was playing the role of B. So now we have four little baby pieces to play with and then the Casio will finish this for us. What in the world is sine theta 1? Well, to know what that is, go to triangle theta 1 and tell me what sine is. So over here, theta 1, sine of theta 1 is... Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so it's opposite over hypotenuse. So this becomes square root 3 over square root 19 multiplication. Now let's find cosine theta 2. Well, theta 2 is here. Cosine of theta 2 is cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be 2 over 5. So that's here. So that's 2 over 5. Addition symbol. Now tell me what cosine theta 1 is. Well, theta 1 is over there. So let's go back over here. So cosine theta 1 equals cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is 4 over square root 19. So we have 4 over square root 19 multiplication. And now finally, what's sine of theta 2? Theta 2 is here. The sine of theta 2, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's this over that. Square root 21 over 5. So we have square root. 21 over 5. And this, folks, is when you go straight to your devices and you type all of that in. So I typed this in and I got the craziest answer that you've ever seen. I got 4 times that plus 2 times this. All of this gibberish sitting on top of 95. That is a lot of math that just took place. So for an exercise like this, call this theta 1, theta 2. You'll have the creation of two triangles, and then you use your trig identities, and then you'll have four individual pieces, and then Casio takes us home. All right, so now it's your turn. Please try the attached exit ticket, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow on Zoom at 2 p.m.